Uh, hello and welcome to Doc Mouse's Daily Scroll. With me, Doc Mouse. Me, Thefier. And me, Anaconda. And Thefier's already doing a really creepy voice. That took, what, ten, like, you know, five, ten seconds? Well, hello there. Oh, dear. <laughs> we have cookies and banana milk. Which means we're all incredibly hyper. Which Yay! means if we start quoting the hidden at any point, um, quite possibly seen that as the hidden, then please forgive us. Alternatively, go check out the channel and say hi. Yeah, so straight into a quick match today with a guy called Magic MW, or possibly a girl. We we really don't know. No, hmm. well, the avatar's female. So we'll call them a girl. If you're actually not a girl and you're male, as we know that some people do play, play the opposite gender, then we are either very sorry or very amused. Take your pick. Hmm. Cool. So they've started out with the Veta of the Wild, which is quite useful for them. They have now got uh, two growth rather than just one, and I have a use as a contraption which will protect me from the Vater of the Wild for a little while. Lol. You look mighty scared there, Vader. If only there was somewhere you could hide. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh with a mouthful of cookie. <laughs> but it's funny. I was going to suggest we all insulted you whilst you had a mouthful of cookie so you couldn't say anything back. Oh, we should play <laughs> that drinking game. Mm. I remember the game where you uh, mentioned Ring of Fire and... Um, you said that at one point someone made a rule where they had to insult you at the end of each sentence. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. <laughs> that was Cassius, and he made the rule that every time someone said anything, they had to insult me. And I was basically silent for the entire time that that rule I came into effect. I personally liked the one <laughs> mooted in questionable content, where you have to say something nice about the person next to you. I quite like the idea of that one. That's mainly because you've been the... Um, but of an insult, the insult of drill, possibly. Maybe if you have to say something nice at the beginning of the sentence, <coughs> and, so, and then insult them at the end. Speak. You have really good hair, you puss, but you puss bucket. <laughs> yeah. No, the worst one for that is instigating the Chantho rule. What's the Chantho rule? Chan. Oh, yeah. Chan, you have Jeez. to say Chan at the start of every sentence, and Tho at the end of every sentence, though. That would drive me nutty. <laughs> That would actually you're suggesting that. you're not already the, the entire yeah. <laughs> is that the doctor at, is it? Yeah. yeah, at the end at the end of that game, and possibly in the middle, someone will be dead, just straight up dead. I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. We have to play um, captains and wenches at some point. Yeah, we should. Pirate drinking game. Fair enough. So I I hate to be the one that does this, but looking at the game, yes. Um, Shaping um, up quite nicely so far. It is, yeah. We're quite a few rounds in, and I just got rid of a Grave Hawk, which is quite nice. I think they played Unleash in a Power, which isn't a growth card I see too often. It increases the attack at the uh, by two, I think, at the cost of two health. Yeah. Maybe it's by one for each. At which point, only two health left. Perfect candidate for a Spark. And there we see I rigged. I used rigged on the um, useless contraption. Which means that when it's killed in melee, it deals four damage to the attacking creature. Nice. Is that a wolf? That's yep. a wolf. That's a mangy wolf. And that is an ether pump, by the looks of it. And a copper automaton. Yay! Which will kill kill the mangy wolf before it gets to attack. Mechanical suicide ladybug. Yep. Basically, yeah. Uh, oh god. It looks more like a tick. Well, I, I think that's appropriate actually, given it goes tick, 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 boom. <laughs> Lol. Why am I reminded of Will Smith's uh, song? What song? The one where it goes tick tick boom. I don't know. He did what a song, song that does that. Yeah, he's done plenty of songs. I, I'm I know he does songs, but I I'm not up with the hippity hops. So yeah. I used to listen to a couple of his switches and stuff like that. They were quite cool. Yeah, cool. I'll take a the listen. The last at some point. song that I can recall that he did was I believe I can fly. And that was like. That wasn't Will Smith. Was it not? No. Was it not? That really wasn't Will Smith. He did something. See, He's I, done a few songs, but that wasn't Will Smith. Is it bad that the last song I actually remember Who him was doing it? was the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme no, tune? No, because that's the one he's more known for. Was he in cool. the video or something? No. Oh, I don't so, know. Yeah, massive like shout-out to anybody who was a fan of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, because I used to watch that show when I was like seven, eight years old. I wow. only ever watched it because there was something good after it. The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> like... Every, like, guys, those of you that grew up in the UK about the same time as us, who remembers, like, the Monday Night Simpsons, then nothing the rest of the week, then can double bill on Friday night? 
I kind of do. And Buffy on Thursdays. Yes. I didn't get... And I always mm. missed Buffy because I was at Brownies. So I didn't Damn. tend to get to watch a lot of TV growing up. Which is probably why I'm so odd these days. But um... <laughs> That was like the only thing I watched on TV. <laughs> it was like Simpsons and Fresh Prince. Oh, and Robot Wars. Oh, so I managed to get to watch Robot Wars every now and then because I watched that with my parents. That I, was quite nice. I didn't like The Fresh Prince because oh. I don't think I really like Will Smith. That's fair enough. <laughs> he kind of Fucking annoys me. Fucking blasphemy. Well, Actually, and, no, he pisses off a lot of people. And, but. <laughs> and the butler with the really, really awful accent. Now, here's that something quite cool. Too. Just quickly. A good bit of removal from energy. Always look for your combinations. The Vage of the Wild got absolutely destroyed by a proximity mine. And then I managed to pull a burnout, which destroyed the Major Wolf. Never be afraid of playing early spells that will kill early creatures off. Especially and against growth. Particularly against growth, because their early creatures can be built up dramatically into late game monsters. So if you're starting out to energy, or you've added energy into your deck, and you're not entirely sure in games whether you want to use your spark now or save it for later, if you if you play your energy well, and you've got clock libraries in your deck, and you can get those out and protect them well enough, and get them to get more cards in your hand, if you can get to the point where you're cycling your deck through ridiculously quickly, then either use it or sack it. Try not to hold on to your cards for too, too long, because that can result in the perfect situation being there, you hesitating, not using your removal, and then the perfect situation just saying bye, yeah. I'll see you later, and never coming back. So, I've had that so many times before, and I've sat there kicking myself, wishing I played a Thunder Surge at that moment, or I'd spark that creature, or I'd burn that creature. Or I'd done something differently with my removal spells. So here's a question for you, and in, in that kind of vein, all of the decks, all the pre-con decks at least that I've seen, are quick starting aside from energy. Yes, yeah. best I can tell. Energy relies actually on a very similar tactic to the way I play magic, mm. whereby you remove as much as possible, as frequently as possible, <coughs> until you've got your big build-up of creatures that oh. you can then kill with. Oh hell yeah, I would definitely agree in that regard because energy is energy is by no means able to quick start unless you fill your deck with scatter gunners storm runners uh lobbers um copper automatons gun automatons automated forgers um you know dust runners all those kinds of things and then nothing else but removal and clock libraries that's the only real way you're going to make an energy deck that's particularly quick starting. Even then, you're more medium than quick, I'd say, because yeah. you're still not going to have the sheer volume of creatures that growth order or decay can pull out of its arse exactly, yeah. that quickly. So energy doesn't have a lot of variety for the creatures in regards to other decks. I mean, you look at growth, and they've got things like the Vaters, they've got the humans of their deck, uh, they've got the wolves of their deck, of which there are three different types of wolves entirely. Bunnies. Yeah, Ow. bunnies. Bunnies are something in their own right. There's only, like, one type of bunny, but... Mm. It duplicates. Yeah. I think the reason why you don't see many people playing bunnies, though, is they seem to be quite rare to um, find, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, there is that. I mean, they're just for you every now and then. You must see bunnies. But, but yeah. with, with the beta being going on for as long as it has done, I mean, it's gone to the point now where it's got its fourth resource. Um, the K... And that's been going on for a while, so it must be, what, two months into beta now? Two, three months? Oh, easily, yeah. At least three months, possibly. Um, I'm, not, I'm a bit fuzzy on the exact timing. But in that time, someone must have pulled a lot of bunnies and thought to make a bunny deck. I have played against one person, and that was really cool. But there must, it, there must be a viable tactic, surely. I'd say bunnies if you shield them for a couple of turns while they build Ooh. up. Then play Necrogeddon on them. Well, it's like the... Um, oh, God, yes. Bunny brother, Rush. The brother of the wolf, for example. <clears throat> I would keep him protected mm. until he's produced at least, like, one wolf. <laughs> to, um, like, replace himself if he gets yeah. fucked over. Now, I'd say for his cost, because I think he costs at least four resources. Yes, um, he costs four. Oh, sweet, I got it right. I wasn't entirely sure about that, because mm. I don't do growth that often. Um... Now, Ragged Wolves are what? One resource each? Yeah, and Mangy Wolves yes. are four. Yeah, now he creates Ragged Wolves. Yeah. So I would say to make it, you know, worth having him out in the first place, you'd want to create at least four Ragged Wolves. Yeah, but he has the same or similar power and um, toughness as the Mangy Wolf. Yeah, I think he's got one more toughness. Uh... Actually, I think their power and toughness is reversed. 
It might so the major be, wolf yeah. has a toughness of three, and the brother of the wolf has an attack of three. Yeah. I think that's possibly where it lies. So we're working out where to place Cobb for Automaton here. Yep. And hopefully I can take out the brother of the wolf, because Hannah is perfectly right. If you allow those guys to build up, Ragged Wolves have haste, so the second they appear, they will rush in and do one damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, yeah, it's only one damage. But if you've got three Ancestral Totems down, that becomes four. Speaking of, guys, to address a question that we got asked um, a couple of episodes ago now, we tend to do all of these recordings in one take. Like, 99.99% .99 recurring percent of the time, we do one take straight through. Yes. We very, very rarely cut stuff up or, you know, take it off. We might remove areas of silence, but yeah. we'll never go back and re-record anything. <coughs> Mainly because we find that, you know, you guys are listening to this, you really do want us almost in real time. Now, we don't do that whilst we're playing the game because we find that having to concentrate on the game to that degree is quite difficult. I think Total Biscuit said it best, where it's very hard to play well to a showcasing standard yeah. while talking into a microphone in a, you know, in a concentrated way. I find it hard enough to, when I'm doing the Megabytes episodes, to sit and talk coherently mm. for about five minutes into the microphone. It can be difficult. Now, just quick note on the game there. You'll see the board's been cleared. Mm. Growth has one particularly powerful removal card. Is that a Quake? Yeah, spot on. Oh. I really want to get my hands on one of those. <laughs> now, the downside of a Quake is... Actually, Hannah, do you want to go through this? The downside of a Quake... I mean, the advantages and disadvantages of what Quake can be for a Growth Does it player. damage your, your creatures as well? Yes, I, it does. Yeah. Um, it basically does three damage to all oppo opposing structures and two damage to all creatures. That's everything. Everything on the board. So if you've got a lot of little things, nice because you're playing growth, they're yep. all going to die to you. Oh, hell yeah. Unless you've bolstered them beforehand. Exactly. <laughs> now, here's a good um, showcase of synergy, for if you just managed to catch that. With a Thunder Surge, remove the Kinsfolk um, Brave, and did two damage to each of those um, Gravehawk, Gravehawks. And the Ether Pump slammed down, doing one extra damage, which killed off those Gravehawks. You're really not letting them keep anything, are you? That's <laughs> quite the dirty removal game right now. As an energy player, you can't afford to let your opponent keep stuff. Yeah. Because by the time you have your creatures, they've got an army. You know, you sit there and you're, you're like, oh, brilliant, I have a Kalan Automaton. And you, your opponent's out there going, well, fuck you, I've got, you know, three mangy wolves, four ragged wolves, you know, three mangy wolves, three ragged wolves, a great wolf who's been, you know, bu buffed by six, and all this other stuff. Now at this point, I've managed to get them to the point where the board is clear and I've got 10 resources, meaning my Solemn Giant can come out and attack on the same turn. That's 8 damage straight off to an idol. Ooh. And that's from having 10 resources and nothing else to spend it on. Yeah. Now that is the ideal situation for any energy player using a Solemn Giant. Because those guys, as has just been seen, are through a Quake and through a Ragged Wolf, are Ow. particularly vulnerable. Yeah. With only a defense of four. If you redesign them, they all of a sudden have a defense of eight, and that makes them much more important. But to get the initial eight damage off, it's that you can't really redesign them. Because it takes ten resources to put them on the field and then get their countdown to zero and watch them attack anyway. Yeah. So unless you've got very, very a lot of late game resources, you're not gonna do particularly well in that regard. Or you can put another enchantment on them which will make them count down if you're destroying creatures that's true yeah the, something like that i keep forgetting that the, the decay exists now you know not that i play decay or anything as well it is a, there's a decay card you enchant your creature with it and every time a creature dies the enchanted creatures count down and reduced by one and now there's I, another one that's order i think that does something similar, but I can't remember. Uh, I think that's either that'll be speed or haste, yeah. because they reduce the countdown of creatures by a set amount. Now, I don't know if that would work with the Solar Giant actually, because he you have to pay. It's said that you have to pay two energy to reduce the countdown. Yeah, that's something worth playing around with. I mean, guys, if you uh, know which decay scroll we're on about, because I can't for the life of me think of it. Uh, can you, Hannah? No. No, well, <laughs> we can't for. What? No, sorry. No, we can't Drawing follow blank. We, we can't think of it. So if you guys know which decay scroll it is, and if you guys have tried this on a Solemn Giant, and it's worked, or it hasn't worked, let us know. Down in the comments, give us an inbox, 
you know, shout at us, do whatever. Just let us know because it'll be interesting to see. And I don't really think we're going to be in much of a situation to try that out anytime like, soon. Like my experiment with um, hex marks on something that had zero shackles on it. To see if it did more damage to the idol than yeah. it damaged. But it didn't work. No. So um, clearly that doesn't quite fit whatever. No, oh, the cursed rules. waking stones. Yes. I attempted to curse the waking stones at one point. I think that's in the tomorrow's game, actually. Yeah. So I'll leave that for tomorrow's commentary, but the bit preview for you. Um, now, in this particular match, the Metal Wonder has just managed to completely total an opponent's idol. Lucky shot, but well worth it. Oh, yes. Now, the problem here is exactly what I said before. I have allowed them to manoeuvre me into, posi into a position whereby I have very little in the way of anything that's defensive, and they have a lot of creatures now. Yeah. And they've spread them across two different parts of the um, board, which is kind of a, a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it means that I'm going to be attacked on two fronts, which means those two fronts are going to be a little bit weaker for now. It's a bad thing because uh, things like Thunder Surge, which require them all to be touching, will not work. I was going to say, it's an ideal strategy on their part to avoid a lot of your removal that uses contiguous squares, or hexes in this case, to... Um, hit. Exactly. Now I've kind of screwed up a little bit here because um, if you notice, his middle idol's got 6 health, but the other idol that's dead is uh, towards the bottom more. Which means that ideally, what I should have really done is to have turtled up down the bottom and done a good bit of damage down the bottom and just ignored the top two rows. Because it's feasible that by doing that I could have done a lot more damage and avoided this situation, whereby now I'm spread across two different fronts trying to keep my idols alive. Do you, do you ever find yourself accepting that I'm going to lose this idol so I'm going to ignore it and put everything else uh, elsewhere? Yes, uh, quite a few times. Quite often I find that idols, I know they're going to die and there is absolutely no way I can save them. What I do do though is I, um, heck do do, uh, what I do is I will place down a sacrificial creature or a sacrificial structure mm -hmm. and they'll be there purely to kind of say, uh, here look at me, I'm defending this idol, this is obviously you know, integral to my um, particular strategy, please don't kill it, I need it, at which point they will then put more effort than is needed into killing the idol. Perhaps making loads of noise and getting donuts. Well, custard donuts <laughs> motherfuckers. Oh dear. Oh, thank God, save that until the end of the recording. <laughs> no. What, you don't want a mouthful of custard while we're recording? Oh, God. <laughs> and that was a couple of seconds since the unveiling of the donuts that a custard joke was made. Of course. Oh, dear. It's his fault. Well, I take full responsibility. Now, now, children. Um, so here we are is a perfect example of the um, screw Dark Mouse over in royally strategy that a lot of players use these days. Um, it's almost like they've been watching you on YouTube or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All my strategies have been uh, shown up because I'm on YouTube now. I, I can now never win another game. <laughs> that I, would suck. I, I find that playing growth myself though, I end up in this situation against energy. Like, mm. the, their side of the board is full and I'm struggling mm. to protect everything at once. Uh -huh. I think that's, um, mm. there you are, a Thunder Surge. I got rid of quite a lot of stuff there. I think uh, that particular problem for some growth players probably either comes down to deck composition or just sheer bad luck. I mean, I've had games where I've had a brilliant run of uh, cards in my hand. I have known that I've got the perfect draw because the opening hand has been perfect, exactly what I need. The right ratio of ones, twos and threes in my hand to make my opening start particularly strong and keep it strong throughout the game. But then I've known situations whereby I have drawn an opening hand and I've had Violent Dispersal, Thunder Surge, Cannon Automaton and uh, something else that's worth four as well, so the Metal Wonder in my hand. And nothing that's worth one, nothing that's worth two, nothing that's worth three and not drawn any of my useful removal stuff later in the game because I've sacked all my heavy stuff. I don't really have much removal stuff. I mm. mean, there are some things in like growth and mm. decay for removal, but I don't really have much. So 
if if a, if a lot of stuff appears, I can't really do much about it <laughs> at the moment. I, th I think um, really the only deck that should focus on heavy removal is energy. It's the only one that's equipped to do it. It's only really in an emergency, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. But I think um, for things like growth, just focus on throwing creatures out there. Mm. Just stick in, like... I think growth generally benefits from having a, an 80% creature composition. Whereas energy kind of doesn't. Mainly because I don't think energy actually can have an 80% creature composition. Mm. I think you'd struggle to get that. Now I'm yeah. going to have players emailing in saying, Oh no, you can put the machine priests in and the tool initiates in and... You, you could know, do if you had all the in. humans in there. Yeah, you could. You, you probably could. I think that touches very much on something about YouTube, though, is that all of this is very much from our opinions and playstyles. Yeah. And if you disagree with us, we're not saying that your opinion's invalid or anything else. But it's... your opinion's invalid. <laughs> no, it's not. We're not saying that. We're not saying that. <laughs> no, it's, it's the idea that this is what works for us, and we are very much just commentators. We're not experts on scrolls by any means. We're not the devs. No. We don't know the optimal plays, we know what works for us mm. and what we enjoy doing. Mm. And that's where I think a lot of people fall down, especially on YouTube in this particular medium. Oh yeah. Is they state stuff as fact that is very painfully, blatantly their opinion. Oh yeah. It's all subjective. There I don't think there are very there's not actually that many objective people on YouTube at all, as much as they might try to be. I just think it's very hard to be objective. We are limited by our experience. Oh hell yeah. I mean, I know I like custard donuts, so I'm going to say custard donuts are good. Yeah. From my point of view, they are. But yeah. there will be someone watching this video, or even contributing to this video, that does not like custard donuts. Quite you possibly. You could be gluten and lactose gluco intolerant. glucose and lactose intolerant, in which case... In which case it's a death trap. <laughs> yeah. For example, yeah, enough, yeah. I, I like cheeseburgers, but a lactose intolerant Hindu wouldn't like cheeseburgers. So, you know... <laughs> Oh, God, just making the point everything is like subjective here you know you have to take everything that's said with a pinch of salt it is indeed um, or if you've got high blood pressure without the salt yeah, yeah. <laughs> very true um, on a card related note in the f few times before this my opponent attempted to take, get rid of the clock library that was there Yeah. he failed and I got my clock library off I have another one now, and I'm looking a bit in a stronger position. Yes, I got a clock library off, shush. Um, nice. The Metal Wonder is still alive. I'm not entirely sure how I kept it alive, other than, you know, pure dumb luck. Yeah, but, that's one um, of your idols gone. Yeah, that's an idol dead. But now I'm one for one, and I still have done quite a bit more damage to his than he has to mine. Actually, no, I tell a lie. One at the bottom is on one. <laughs> clock libraries are my favourite target for regenerature. They're brilliant. So do you because want to explain regenerature? Gone. Well, it increases the health of the unit target, targeted, but also damages the idol belonging ah. to the person who owns yeah, nice. that unit. So if you put it on a clock library, it doesn't matter that it increases the health, because it's going to be dead soon anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this is true, but that is the trade-off. Do you want your opponent to have those extra three scrolls? Because it helps them cycle stuff through the deck. So if you know they played a Thunder Surge early on, yeah. and then they start cycling through using clock libraries, then what will it yeah but if i don't think i'm going to be able to get rid of it anyway oh yeah if, if you're not entirely sure if you're going to get rid of it anyway a sound tactic yeah but uh, i think at that point you've got to kind of wonder I mean, it's obviously started working for you <laughs> or i don't want to keep doing it yeah that's uh that's a good it's a good idea i mean stuff like that on structures is brilliant Be particularly if you're not entirely sure if you can kill them hell you might not want to kill them there are certain structures that uh your opponent can play down, and if you're using Decay, that's more of a boon to you. It's like, oh, look, you've put a structure right in front of there. Oh, what a pity, it's only got one health. Well, um, the Idol's dead anyway, dude, sorry. <laughs> it's like things like the Loyal Darkling. They've been put in there purely because Decay doesn't have a lot of hard-hitting late-game stuff. Like, yeah. The only one I've really seen is the Illmire Witch Doctor. Yeah. Or the Ilmire Rot Eater if you've powered it up using either Grizzly Craft or just having it survive a lot of other creatures around it dying. Now, to combat that, to get rid of having to plow through lines and lines and lines of um, of enemy units, because nothing in the game has Relentless as far as I can I'm aware, uh, the Loyal Darkling, when it dies, will do two damage to an idol on that unit, idol on that rot, which is particularly useful. 
Because late game, if you've only got two damage left on that, on that idol, then, uh, yeah, it's dead. I think Relentless is more of a growth in order thing. It is. Um, I mean, nothing in, all, in energy, sorry, inherently has it, but you can use Machination Mindset to give it to it. Ah, I'm a bit screwed. Oh, Crimson Bull, this might be a GG. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's GG. Wow. Magic, uh, Magic MW? Quickly. Yeah. That was Nicely a really played. good match, though. That was a hell of a good play at the end there. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, stuff like that the growth players can pull off is particularly useful yeah. and good. That was a brilliant player by uh, Magic MW and a brilliant match. And I hope to see him in later matches, actually. Or her. Or her in later matches. Yeah. So now we'll get the scroll. Um, again, just the one scroll, saving up for the scrolls pack, and we get Unbind. Nice. Cool. So that's all we have time for today. Like, favourite, and subscribe to support the series. We'll catch you next time. Bye, Bye. guys. Hi, hey guys. Theff again here. I'm hijacking the end of the today's daily scroll to tell you about a very exciting project run by us, launching on Kickstarter called the State of Gaming Address. If you are in any way interested in how gaming affects society, or whether there's any truth to the mass media claims of games making people violent or other such things, come and support us on Kickstarter, link in the description below. We will be creating a multi-part series looking at games from a scientific attitude. That doesn't mean we're trying to suck all the fun out of them, it means that we want a response as gamers every time the mass media turn around and go, oh games make you violent, or games are bad for kids, or whatever. Come find us on Kickstarter for more information. There'll be a big Q&A type video going up either later today or tomorrow. Thanks for your time. Bye.